Hey everyone, I'm uh, James Dillard, and I'm going to be talking to you today about building user-focused products. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to join me. Before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm cur currently a product manager at YouTube on the creator team. Uh, prior to that, I worked as a PM at AdRoll, and before that, the Climate Corporation. Um, I'm living now in Zurich, Switzerland, but originally I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And outside of work, I love to uh, catch a basketball game or do some cooking. Um, but that's not what you came for. Let's talk about building user-focused products. So <clears throat> I'd like to cover four things in this conversation today. Um, the first is to spend a little bit of time talking about why it's important to spend time talking to users. Uh, the second is to talk a little bit about what keeps us or what keeps, you know, to be, to be honest, me from talking to users more often. And then I'd like to share a little bit about how I use user feedback in different parts of my uh, work and project cycle as a PM and some strategies that I've, I use and that I've seen others use for building in user feedback as a part of their work day to day. Um, okay, so first, why does it matter to talk to users? And I'd actually like to ground this conversation in the why a little bit, because I think most of us who uh, are either doing product work or who are who want to be doing product work are pretty user oriented by nature, uh, and so because of that, I think we'd say, yeah, of course, uh, it's important to talk to users without really thinking about the why. And but if you think about the why, I think it uh, helps clarify when to do it and and uh, raises the importance of doing it. So uh, the first thing that the first reason that I think it's important to talk to users is that I think it is by far the most important thing to your success as a PM and especially your long-term success. Uh, as a product manager, like fundamentally what you're trying to do is deliver a product or a feature or experience that a user can only get from your product that they can't get from anywhere else. And I just don't think you can do this without understanding the user's perspective. Um, there are many other things besides just how the product work that are important, the marketing, the execution, the distribution, go to market. Uh, but it's hard to even really assess those things and which of those things are most important for your particular product without understanding the user or the customer. Um, uh, the second thing the uh, second reason that I think uh, it's important to be talking to users is that you can get information from users that you're not going to find anywhere else. Um, certainly, there are many different sources of information that we're not going to talk about today that are useful, uh, that, that go into a decision to build something. Um, you know, uh, analysis, uh, industry reports, surveys, like, and A-B testing. And I, I'm not saying that these things don't have any value. But what I, what, I, what I do think is that you get information from talking to users that you won't find in these things. How users feel, what motivates them, where your product actually fits or doesn't fit in their workflow, how they think. And in my experience, these are the things that are most likely to lead you into an idea that is 10x better uh, than what's out there. So it's, it's one thing to you know, notice an opportunity in the data, but I think to really figure out what to do with that opportunity and to capture it, you have to be talking to people and understanding uh, how you know, that need fits into their broader life. And then last but not least, I think it's important to talk to users uh, to build your, your user intuition. Um, the truth is, is that there's not time to run every decision uh, past, past users um, you, or even to do analysis on every decision and having a deep intuition that uh, about what users care about helps you understand which of the decisions you need to make in a given day or week are high risk and need more um, uh, user input or input of, of whatever uh, kind and which decisions are low risk and, and you can kind of make and move on, uh, which is a huge part of uh, being a, a steward of your team's time and effort. Okay, so if talking to users is so important, 
why don't we do more of it? And the reason I wanted to focus on this a little bit here, uh, especially for those of you who've been PMs for a little while, and when I think of my uh, experience when I've been, you know, maybe a PM for a year, uh, I definitely would have said talking to users is important. But if I looked back on how much time I was actually spending doing it, um, it probably wasn't happening that often. And so I've listed some of the reasons here. So, and these are honestly probably excuses that I've given in the past uh, around why I'm not talking to more users. Um, so I'm not bragging when I when I put this up. I think it's there's there's a pull away from user conversations because of the roadmap, because you have a deliverable that needs to go out, because there's a there's a bug, uh, and honestly sometimes uh, because you're not you know when you go out and you talk to a user. You're not sure what they're going to say. Um, and there's an aspect of product management sometimes that's about, you know, uh, getting a decision to be made. And if you go and you have, you know, five user conversations, they aren't going to be perfectly representative. And some of the feedback may not be what you expect. And you can't control it. And so I think it's really important to to separate that, that out a little bit, right? Because if, if you... Um, it's unlikely to be the most urgent thing uh, that you have to do, but it is over time, super, super important. Uh, and so because there are all these things that kind of pull us away from uh, talking to users, I, I, I personally have found it to be important to like build a habit that pulls me into user conversations and, and makes it something that I don't have to think about so that, uh, so that I don't get too far away from it. Let's assume now that we accept that talking to users is important and that we're going to you know, try to guard ourselves against uh, you know, the things that pull us away from talking to users frequently. I'd like to spend a little bit of time talking about some of the different types of user conversations that I had and what they are and, while they're, and why I find them to be valuable. So uh, the first type of conversation that I have is a user interview. Um, and I try to keep these pretty open-ended, even when I have a particular feature that I'm, I'm working on. Um, and this is, you know, sitting down with a customer or a user and saying, you know, tell me about the problems that you have. What keeps you up at night? What are you working on right now? What's, what's going really well for you? Um, and letting them talk uh, and get comfortable with you and ask you questions, uh, but also learning about uh, who they are. And I, the one thing I'd say about these is that it's really important for you as a product manager to be the person who leads at least some of these. You'll de probably share this with a designer on your team, maybe a UX researcher, uh, maybe uh, sales or uh, someone in kind of a like sales support role, but you need to be doing at least some of these so that you get a feel for what it's like to be one of these users. The second type of user conversation that I like to have is actually going out and pitching the product and trying to sell a user to try out a feature or a set of features or, or the product as a whole. Um, uh, and this is what it sounds like. It's, it's you know, riding alongside someone from the sales team and trying to convince someone to, to use your product. Uh, the next is acting as customer support. This also is what it sounds like. It's sitting next to the person on, on your team that does customer support. If they'll let you take over uh, the call or the chat or the email um, and actually uh, you know, helping people with bugs or things that are going wrong. Uh, the next is concept testing. This is a little bit more uh, formal, but it's taking uh, at least one, but hopefully three, maybe four concepts and showing them to a user and then taking their feedback. Uh, then there's demoing. This is like concept testing, but with the actual product instead of mocks or pictures or a description. And then last but not least, uh, alpha testing. I find this to be crucially important, uh, making sure that people before the product launches, that there are users that can use it and get feedback. Um, yeah. So. Now that we've run through these different types of conversations, let's talk a little bit about what they're good for. Um, broadly speaking, the top half of this list of conversations is really good for understanding what to do 
And the bottom half of this list is good for understanding how well you executed or if your product is ready to launch. So user interviews, pitching the product, acting as customer support, these types of conversations help me to understand uh, what the product, what should be on the roadmap, right? What are, what do you really care about? What gets them excited? How, what comes up again and again and again as an unmet need? Where does the, where do existing solutions like not quite fit with what, um, with what someone has uh, today? Um, or what bugs are just like super painful and end up like driving people away, causing them to give up? This is all, this all goes into kind of roadmap planning. And I think the important thing to keep in mind about this is that this part of product work is like kind of unlikely to show up on your OKRs. It's sort of something that you're expected to kind of go out and do on your own. Uh, and that's part of the reason why I think it's really important to, you know, be in the habit of doing it. Uh, yeah. So now let's talk about the second half. You, you are a really diligent PM, you, you know, have lots of user interviews as a part of your daily job, you pitch your own product, you understand exactly what's on the roadmap. Now you have a problem that you want to solve or a feature that you want to launch. And I think the second half of this list is where you start to find out how to solve that problem and how well you're executing against that. So you take uh, three or four concepts and you put them in front of users and you're, you're seeing what resonates with them. Some of this is, can be quantitative, but a lot of it, um, one of the best product leaders I've ever worked with says, you know, he looks for, for at the customer's eyes. Like, when do they really light up? And that's, that's what helps him know, okay, I'm on to something. That may not be exactly what you build, but you're in the right direction. Once you have that kind of concept, you then start to build it. And I think as soon as possible, you want to try to demo it to customers, even though it may be incomplete, um, and when you're demoing it, it will be incomplete, right? It's not the finished product. And what you are listening for there is when you're showing it to someone, are they excited about the same things you're excited about? And are they seeing the same gaps that you're seeing? So if you're looking at something and you're saying, I think this is incomplete for A, B, and C reason, and the user is saying something else, you know, D, E, F, that's a problem. And you want to try to you want to make sure those things are at the, very, at the very least coming at some point uh, so, that, so that you can fix it. And then finally, what I like to do before any you know, meaningful feature launch is actually have some users use the product as a part of day-to-day -day life. Um, I try to give them an email address that I have access to. Uh, and if they have problems, uh, uh, to just email into it. And I, I find you get two things out of this. Um, the first is that you get, uh, you get just, you find bugs and you find it's the difference in polish between an 80% feature and a 100% feature. Um, occasionally you find things that you're not going to be able to fix for launch and that's okay. It's better to know about them and be able to plan for that uh, than to find out when you launch. And then occasionally, and if you're doing everything right, this doesn't happen that often, but you actually find out that you built the wrong product. And it's much, much better to find out that you built the wrong product prior to launch than after launch. Um, because you have, you can go back and start again. Uh, you can, yeah, you have, you just have more options than on how you want to handle it. Okay. Uh, so, um, if those are the different types of user conversations, kind of where they fit, Let's talk a little bit about how to actually make this a habit and build this into your day to day. And I've listed um, some different things here that I've seen the best PMs that I work with uh, do. The things that I've been like, oh man, like when I'm watching people and I'm watching their work, I'm like, I'm jealous that person does amazing work. These are the types of like user uh, habit, user focused habits that they have. Um, so, uh, and hopefully these will kind of prompt you and you can think about your product and your company and how you can use them. The first advice I'd have is to look for the places where your users hang out and go there. Those can be physical places, conferences, industry events. Those can also be digital places, uh, Reddit subs, uh, uh, YouTube channels, what have you. Um, uh, but actually go and represent your company there uh, and take user questions and 
I try to use that as a way to build a couple of users that um, I have a relationship with. I try to make sure that at any point in time, I have call it three to five uh, users, in my case right now, YouTube creators, that I can send an email and get a response. Um, I have found it in general good that these are not necessarily the biggest users or the biggest uh, customers of the product because they frequently get a lot of attention from the company. And oftentimes they're, they're not totally representative. Additionally, uh, it's unlikely that, you know, your company doesn't care about what its largest customer or largest user thinks. It's helpful for you as a PM to have a, a, a sense of what it's like to be more of a typical user. Um, or maybe even an atypical user, somebody who has needs that stretch the product a little bit uh, so that you are hearing things uh, and understanding a perspective that the rest of the company won't share. Um, I try to make sure that I have my people on the sales team and on customer support that I trust and that trust me enough to bring me along uh, and allow me to sit in as they do their jobs, occasionally to, to, to try my best to do what they do. And because, you know, you don't, there's a, uh, when you pitch your product for the first time, you all of a sudden see it with a new sense of clarity. And, uh, and you're not going to, you know, this isn't part of your job. Like no one's ever going to say, Hey, or it will be rare for somebody to say, Hey, product manager, go, go pitch this new this new person on a product. Like that's that's not typically what you do. So you need to have a friend who will help set that up for you. Um, and then two other things that I, I've seen uh, people do that are less user conversations in the, uh, the traditional sense, but allow you to kind of use uh, technology. So creating a social community for your users. I know a lot of companies are doing podcasts now. My team at YouTube has a YouTube channel called Creator Insider where we put product updates and do sneak peeks on features and deep dives on areas that are of interest to customers. Uh, I've, I've used Reddit this way in the past where you can kind of read through different subreddits and um, see what users are actually talking about. And um, yeah, what I think is great about this is um, it's a little bit more work, but you start to have users coming to you and it gets, so it get, first of all, this is kind of outside of the scope of this conversation, but it gives you a way to speak directly to your users as a, as a product manager, which is super valuable. Um, but it also, you know, you get the comments and you get the, the, uh, the people writing in and you, you know, these platforms are often designed to be um, two-way conversations, community conversations. And so you would be amazed how much detail you can get out of that. And how often you find something that you should be looking at uh, through that forum. And then last but not least, like engaging on social media, you know, I've seen awesome PMs take questions from users on Twitter, uh, you know, particularly if your user base is really active on a, a particular platform. The other thing I've seen here, um, I know a lot of uh, PMs at YouTube are in like Discord groups with YouTube creators because lots of YouTube creators use Discord. And it's a really natural way to get feedback from a user the in a you know where they live digitally, right? Like, and that's that's kind of the best way. You kind of become coworkers with them in a way. They, they start to feel comfortable you with you in a way that they wouldn't uh, if they were just meeting you first time on a video call. So hopefully that's helpful. I would encourage you to take, you know five or 10 minutes after this and like come up with a plan, put this stuff on your calendar, set some goals for yourself. Even if you don't get a hundred percent of, of you know, what you set out to do, you'll probably pick up one or two things and, you know, be able to carry that on into the future. Uh, so just to summar summarize really quickly, um, it's tough to be a great PM without talking to your users, make the time to do it. Uh, it's a discipline. It's not going to happen without your effort. Don't wait for it to come for you. Have a plan on how to do it. There are different types of conversations that are valuable for different parts of the product development process. You know, you need to have some idea of where you are. Sometimes as a PM, I'm in roadmap mode. I'm trying to understand. Other times as a PM, mode, I'm in execution mode. And, and shift your mix of user conversations to fit where you are in your job. 
Uh, and then last but not least, like be strategic and creative in making this a habit. Um, I, you know, didn't start as a PM knowing how to do this stuff. I watched other PMs do it better than me and found a way to work it into my, uh, my work. Um, that's all I've got today. Uh, I'm at James Dillard on Twitter. Uh, if you have a question or um, feedback, I'd love to hear it. Uh, definitely hit me up and don't be shy. And yeah, uh, I'm li on LinkedIn as well. So uh, reach out if there's something I can do to help you out. I'd love to do it. All right, thanks. Have a great day.